is Michelle Long, and I'm a CPA and an Advanced Certified QuickBooks Pro Advisor, and I'm the owner of Long for Success. Thanks for joining me for this QuickBooks tip today as I show you how to clean up undeposited funds. This is one of the most common mistakes that people make when they're working with QuickBooks. First, let me tell you a little bit about how this happens, and then more importantly, I'm going to show you how you can clean it up and fix it. So what happens is people will come along and they enter an invoice, then later they receive the payment from their client. So they come in here and I'm going to go ahead and receive a, a payment from another test customer that I have. And I received $1,100 from them. So I receive my payment. I save and close. And then I go look in my check register and I say, gosh, where's my payment? I put $1,100 in there. I don't see it. Hmm. I better go ahead and enter that payment that I got. So they tab across their check register and put in that amount. And usually they will post it to an income account because it's money from a customer. It's a sale that I had. I'm going to put it to income. And now I go ahead and record that. And now when I reconcile my bank account, I can reconcile because I only put the money into the checking account one time. So I don't realize I have a problem. But when I look at undeposited funds on my chart of accounts, it's an other current asset account. And you can see if you have a big balance there and it's not clearing out, you've got a problem. And what usually happens is if undeposited funds is overstated, income is also overstated because you recorded the income when you entered the invoice. But then when you recorded it as a deposit in your check register, you recorded it as income again. So usually income is overstated as well as undeposited funds. And this is true for people who enter a sales receipt instead of an invoice or receive payments. You need to follow the flow chart. So whether you're doing it as an invoice and receive payments or creating a sales receipt, you follow the flow chart over here to record that deposit. There's no direct line down to the check register. When you click on record deposits, it will show you all the payments that are sitting in undeposited funds waiting for you to group them together to make a deposit to match the bank statement. This is how you get them out of undeposited funds. If you don't do this, it just keeps growing and growing and they will just sit in here. I've actually seen somebody that had about 15,000 payments sitting in here in undeposited funds. So it is a problem and you can't make a, a journal entry to fix it. A journal entry does not actually get these payments out of there. So I'm going to show you how you can fix this. Now, if you're an accounting professional, you can use the client data review tool. Let me go ahead and show you this real quickly for accounting professionals who are using QuickBooks Accountant Edition. There is a tool in client data review that will allow you to go through and clear up the undeposited funds account. You can go up and go through and use that tool to help clean things up. If you don't have that tool, I'm going to show you how you can clean it up. I'm going to go ahead and click on payments to bring those payments back. One thing I want to point out to you as well is to look at the dates of these payments. In this task file that I have here, the sample company file, it's actually the current year is 2015. So some of these from 2014 are from the prior year. If you've already filed your tax returns and closed out your prior year, you may have reported too much income. Because remember, if undeposited funds is overstated, your income is likely overstated. You may have claimed too much income. You may need to file an amended tax return. Consult with your accountant or your tax professional to figure it out and to see what you might need to do. Well, you could come in here and you could go through and decide that you want to deposit these in bulk. So you may want to do all of last year or all of one month and group them together by month or by year. You can figure out how you want to do that. For now, I'm just going to select these first two. I'm going to click on OK. And you're saying, but wait, Michelle, I don't really want to deposit this into my checking account because my checking account balance was OK. I'm able to reconcile. What you want to do is come down to the next available line and select the income account that is also overstated. So you need to go in and look to see which account it is that was posted to when you recorded it as a deposit into the check register. So go ahead and select that income account and then look and see what is the total deposit amount here. We're going to enter that as a negative amount, 17147.91, so that our net deposit is actually zero because our checking account balance is okay. This will fix the payments that are sitting out there in undeposited funds as well as the overstatement in the income account.
So I'm going to go ahead and do save and new so I can show you that one more time. You can go through here, select them by month or by year, or you know, you determine how you want to do that. Or I'm going to go through and do select all. You click OK. You enter the income account that is overstated. You enter the total amount as a negative here, so 15,398.21, so that the net deposit is zero. Also make sure that you're changing your, your date up here. If I was adjusting last year, I should have changed that to 12-31-2014. Um, so you're going to maybe want to change your dates up here as well. And then I can go ahead and click Save and Close. So that is how you can go through and fix these things in bulk if you don't want to go through and fix them individually. So I hope this has been helpful for you. Thanks for listening and check out my other resources, a book so that I've authored and some QuickBooks training resources at longforsuccess.com. Thanks.